Hey guys, it's Trius here, and we're getting the most torque out of this tiny V8 engine. I'm skipping over the rest of the inline engines after the inline 6 build. That's because if I a 134cc i3 making 151 pounds feet of torque struggled big time than any other engine. It's better off choosing the bigger cylinder count engine seeing that they generate more torque with less turbo lag. So anyways, for this engine build, the first thing you gotta check on the top left portion of your screen is you set the year by maximizing it to the year of 2020. And after you've chosen the V90 degree V8 engine configuration, and it must be a V90 degree because we're gonna be adding a flat plane type of crankshaft later on. And for the block material, you may choose any of four types of block materials you may choose from. I'm gonna select magnesium for the sake of weight and pretty much mostly everything positive about this. For the family capacity right here for the bore is you lower this all the way down to 50 millimeters and the stroke same thing also lower this down all the way to 40 millimeters to get the engine size of 628 cubic centimeters with a dual overhead cam 5 valve. Again for the head material any of these three you could choose from we choose aluminum silicon for the sake of weight. And as usual, for the quality slider right here, max out to a plus 15 for everything you see here for the engine. And right below this little box here with the sandbox tech pool, you click on that to bring up this window right here. And in this window, you change everything where it says plus 5 for the engine and all that good stuff right here, is you maximize this all the way up to a plus 15. For the engine in general, the bottom end, the top end, the turbocharger, the fuel system, and for the exhaust pipe and everything. After you get everything maxed out to a plus 15, click on apply changes and we'll go on to the bottom end of the engine. So for the bottom end, first things first with the variant capacity in the far left is you lower the bore yet again to the lowest of 45 millimeters, and lastly for the stroke, all the way down to 28 millimeters to get the final engine size to 356 cubic centimeters. And the crank count rods and pistons and the balancing bass, well first things first, like I said about the crankshaft, it'll be a build steel flat plane type of crankshaft with the count rod set to a lightweight titanium and the pistons set to a low friction cast to generate more power and a tad bit more in torque. With the balancing mass, we're not going to be choosing a harmonic damper whatsoever for this build. For the compression, you increase this quite a bit to a 13.0 to 1 ratio at a high setting right here. With the camp profile, just like my previous engine build, all the way up to a racing setting of 100. The springs and lifters just set this three clicks down from the 50 default value here to a 47. And we're using VVT for all the cams and the RPM we set this by nearly maxing it out to an 11,200 RPM. For the turbocharger, it's going to be a single turbo setup with a smart boost system to reduce all that turbo lag as much as we can. With the intercooler size right here to 547 horsepower. For the aspiration setup details right next to this, we're choosing the standard geometry ball bearing setup with the compressor size set for the first option at 51.5 millimeters right here. The second setting with the turbine, you leave this by maxing out all the way at a 52.8 millimeters. The air and compressor trim, the third section, is you set this to a 52. And lastly, for the boost, the fourth option is you set this to a 54.39 PSI, which is uh, quite a bit up in here, folks. And for the fuel system, it's pretty much the usual, so we're choosing the direct injection throttle for cylinder race intake with the manifold size set to a 24. Yeah, 24. With the fuel type we're using, good old nitromethane, the dragster type of fuel we got going here. With the ignition timing map right below this, is you set this to a negative 5, which advances it as much as possible. And the fuel map, you put this at quite a lean setting to a 27. And finally, for the headers, you exhaust everything else in general. So for the headers, choosing the tubular racing headers with the header size set to a 43, just a few clicks down. With the exhaust diameter set to a 57.1 millimeters, which equals a 2.25 inches. And lastly, no cats and no mufflers. And finally, bring up the quality. And we get the final horsepower rating of 679.6 .6 horsepower to 10,700 RPM. And the highlight of the video is the torque at 378.2 pounds feet of torque at 9,000 RPM. So we got quite a bit of turbo lag going on with this engine in general. It starts, well, first of all, it starts at 1800 RPM at idle. And then it kicks up a little bit, little by little. And then at 7700 RPM, that's where you start to see the turbocharger really kick in and then go from there. Now for this part of the video, I'll give you a list of what this engine will sound like with the manual testing mode with this graph here. 
And after showing you the graph as so, I'll show you the edge it as is by doing some fake gears just for a little while and end off the video right then and there. So bring back this here graph and give you a listen right now. So you got a wannabe Honda VTEC sounding engine up in here, higher pitched everything, with a side of turbo lag. So that'll do it with automation the car company Tycoon gave with the small, torque heavy V8 engine. This turbo lag is just as bad as my inline 6 engine I made in the last video. It kicks in like 3 quarters of the way until it redlines, but hey, at least it makes the most torque while being this small and lightweight. I guess that only matters building these kinds of engines. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.